Hello children, welcome to story time with Miss Nidhi. Today I have an exciting story to share with all of you. As you all must be aware that every year in the month of January we observe Republic Day for our country India. So I thought why not to read a story which gives us some information about our country. So today the book which I have is written and illustrated by Olivia Fraser and published by Pratham Books. The name of this story is Handmade in India. Let me share a little brief about this book. Olivia Fraser has travelled around India painting for the past many years. This book has arisen from her observations of the vast colourful array of people she came across during her travels. So she was precisely recorded all her observation in the form of a book. This book is a total visual delight. I assure that you will love the illustrations in this book. So let's not wait and get started to see what Olivia Fraser has in store for all of us. If you've travelled India from north to south and from east to west, Best, you will notice or you would have noticed that people make things everywhere in the fields, beside the road, in open doorways and on verandas. They make things to eat, to wear, to sell and to help build India and its people and it's all there for everyone to see. I myself have few such experiences. I'm sure you might have also experienced something. If you have, then do hashtag my channel, my motherhood studio and share your experiences with me. Let me now continue with the story. Notice these two women. These are Himachali women whom the author met when she was walking in the Himalayan mountains in Himachal Pradesh in the northern part of India. Do you know what these women are doing? Oh, the author has painted them with sheep because they are using sheep's wool for what they are making. One woman spins the wool to make it into an even thread. The other is knitting a multicolored woolly jumper. Why? Because in northern part of India, people experience winter. So you need to wear warm clothes. And do you know, wool can be dyed all the colors of the rainbow. But the author, like the woman who is wearing a natural colored outfit, is the same color as the brown sheep. I love colorful sweaters to wear, don't you? Now let's observe this next illustration by the author. Can you see what women are doing? I think they are taking something out uh, from a well. It appears to be a well. Let's read. This is a site you would have seen all over India a long ago where women would collect water from a well to drink and cook with. These women are from the state of Haryana which is again in the northern part part of India. However, now because we all get fresh and clean tap water supplies direct to our homes in the cities and in most of the Indian villages, people don't go to well to take out water but there are still some villages where people take water out from a well to drink and to cook food at home. However, do you know that well water is usually the cleanest and safest water to drink? as it comes straight from deep under the ground far from all the pollution that can seep into surface water. These women are wearing the typical North Indian dress which is called a salwar kameez. Look at how well they balance two pots of water on their heads. Can you try that? Do you think it will be easy? Do give it a try. Oh, look at this next illustration. 
I see a man sculpting something. Can you figure out what is he sculpting? And do observe the other sculptures too. They look so intricate and so well done. So the author saw this man at work sitting outside his workshop in the state of Karnataka, which is the southern part of India. He's a sculpture artist and he's using a hammer and a chisel to make an image of a god out of stone. Can you guess which one? To me, it looks like Lord Ganesha. So every year when Lord Ganesha comes home, we chant Ganpati Bappa Moria. You know what? The author has painted all the tools he used for his work. The author thought they make interesting shapes all lined up together. Surrounding him are the other sculpture he has made of animals and people which we observed just a while ago. Try to recognize if you can recognize nice the sculpture around this artist which all sculpture are these now look at this beautiful illustration i see these women standing with a big bundle on their head and i see a lovely tree right behind them i'm really loving this illustration done by the author let's read what is it about on the edge of a forest in karnataka the author came across these women collecting firewood they are wandering gypsies from a tribe called the banjara tribe observe and look at the heavy jewelry they wear but even heavier must be the huge bundles of sticks they are carrying can you see how they have wound up pieces of cloth into a tight circle and placed it on their heads to help them balance the load this also protects them from any thorns or spikes the sticks may have can you guess what fruit is growing on the trees oh look this fruit is one of my favorite it's the most delicious fruit and it is also known as the king of the fruits in india i think you got the answer right they are mangoes and look at that beautiful peacock sitting right perched up on the mango tree lovely this reminds me ah summers and delicious mangoes oh look what I, this looks like a paddy field oh yes and see there are so many women over there let's find out what they are doing these women are from the state of karnataka again and they are helping me one of the most important things to eat in our country india and that's rice don't we all eat rice yes we do rice grows in flooded fields called paddy fields here the women are ankle deep in the paddies replanting the rice saplings at regular intervals so that the rice will grow strong and healthy can you see how the women have tied up their sarees so that their clothes don't get wet in the water i think their back must be ow, aching by the end of the day don't you think so see how they are bending while working in the paddy fields oh look look at this what this can be let me read it so the author saw these men mending a railway track in goa on the southwest coast of india can you see all the different tools they are using the author like the fact that the workers uniform used the color of the indian flag can you all share with me what is the color of the indian flag yes orange white and green can you spot the man who is in charge of all the workers the author made the railway into the shape of a clock as trains have to be on time we all should be on time always do you think so it's very important to respect hours and other people time now let's see there is a woman looks like she's painting onto something oh my my look at the beautiful paintings around her let's find out what is this woman doing so the author visited a village in orissa in the eastern part of india in tiny made up of crafts people everybody was sitting outside their houses and workshops making things this lady 
is a paper mache painter. She has painted, amongst other things, some brightly coloured images of Jagannath. Do you know who is Jagannath? He is none other than Krishna. So Jagannath is another name of Lord Krishna. Look at all the different patterns and the different colors the painter uses. She hopes to sell her wares to tourists and pilgrims. The author liked her elephant mask best. What do you like the best from her paintings? Have a look again at the paintings and decide for yourself which painting you like the most. Oh my god, look at this. This man is doing something really creative and different. I can't make out what is he up to. Let's find out. Besides a dusty village road in Bengal, in the eastern part of India, the author came upon this man called a Thathera beating tin strips into a bucket shape. First, he decorated the tin by puncturing holes in its surface with a pin to make interesting patterns. Then he rolled the metal into a cylinder as he is doing in the picture shown. And he made a great racket. He bashed the two ends together with small pins. Finally, he attached the base of the bucket in the same way. They look very pretty, don't you think? Now, let's see what these women and men are doing. They seem to be working on some kind of bricks and it's written gold on the bricks. Can you all read? I can read. Try reading. Try reading along with me. Now, let's find out what they are up to. These people are making bricks. The author liked the way the name stamped on the bricks is gold as if they were nuggets of gold instead of bricks made out of baked earth. Here the women are taking some specially prepared brick clay and are shaping it in the rectangular wooden bowls. They slice off any excess clay with a strip of metal. Bricks are baked in a special oven called a kiln and the entire process of making a brick takes 25 long days. These ovens have tall, thin, tower-like chimneys. You can see these chimneys all over India dotting the countryside. The author saw these brick makers in the state of Bengal. But you know, I grew up in the state of Uttar Pradesh and whenever we used to pass through the countryside with my parents, even we used to observe people making bricks. So I have seen people making bricks. Take help of your parents to go countryside and see if you can find people making some bricks. It's going to be a very adventurous experience for you all. I am sure about that. Now let's observe the next illustration. I see some fishes around and I see these two women who are holding something really big on their shoulders. Let's read and find out what is this about. Travelling through Bengal, the author passed a lot of small round ponds called Pukurs. There she saw these fisher women carrying their round nets with the day's catch in the little baskets which they strapped to their heads. The author watched them catch fish. A group of women stood up to their waist in water, forming a row in the pond. They each splashed the water vigorously, holding the bamboo rim of their nets. Then all together, they would dip their nets lower into the water and all together scoop up any fish. So the author has painted the fish to its actual size. People like to eat them fried and crispy. Do you eat fish too? And do you enjoy eating fish? Let me know. So let's see this next illustration. Ah, I think they seem to be rolling chapatis. Let's read and find out. So the author went to a wedding in the state of Rajasthan, which is the western part of India. And the author watched a huge wedding feast being prepared. These women were making chapatis, which we all eat every day at home. Yum, yum. They sat in a circle, each person helping with one stage of the chapati making. So the first lady saved the flour through a 
metal sheet with lots of hole in it. Another adding water kneaded it into dough with her fist. The next separated the dough into little balls ready for the final rolling out into a chapati shape. A large plate of ready rolled chapati was then whisked off into the kitchen to be cooked for the wedding feast. Don't you enjoy hot hot chapatis? I do. When my parents would make it for me. All right, let's come to the next illustration. I see bunch of women here doing so much hard work. These women are road builders. The author saw them flattening out some rocky ground in Rajasthan. They use their picks and shovels to help clear a pathway through the desert. Later, a proper road for cars and trucks will be laid down. These women come from the Rambadi tribe in Rajasthan. The author was particularly struck by the colorful clothes they wore and the strength these women had to do this very hard work. Can you spot a lady who is wearing the most number of bangles? And can you spot a tiffin box in the illustrations? Take a moment, pause the video and look at the illustration carefully. So this is our India from east to west and north to south. I hope you enjoyed our journey today and I should be back with some more fun interesting things about our country soon for all of you. Till then you all stay tuned and keep reading apart from listening to read aloud. It's a very good habit to read one book a day. Miss Nidhi will be back for you with another story soon. Till then, ta-ta, bye-bye.